There, see, I wasn't lying. I started cleaning up my chest monster, and uh, <laughs> I created a bunch of storage disks, and uh, I uh, quickly ran out of redstone. But I should be clear, when I say I ran out of redstone, it's because I was making 64K storage cells. Not 256, which you can go up to, but this is already more than I need right now. It's just the limit of 63 items in a disc. That's my core problem. But I have four of these now. So we're slowly starting to get cleaned up. Some of this mess is getting removed as we go. And I added a chest to dump all my old equipment into, which, yeah, this is, this is still a problem that I'm gonna have to resolve at some point. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Arden. Welcome to another episode of All the Mods 8. And patch 1.0.11 got released. And we're going to talk about it for a brief bit before we get started here, because there's two interesting things I want to bring up. The first is that Thermal Dynamics exists as a mod in 1.19 again, which I actually had to go make sure this wasn't some sort of early April Fool's joke, because this has been absent for years at this point. But you'll notice that there's a flux duct, a fluid duct, and a fluid duct window. You notice what's missing? That's right, the item duct. So, um, well that doesn't solve the pipes problem, does it? It also doesn't solve the other problems we would need and it's just easier to use laser IO at this point. So I think we're gonna stick with this trunk. The other thing is, for around a day, I had to do a lot of digging because I started regularly getting crashes sometimes on login. There's a reported issue for a crash inside their GitHub account, and it seems like a lot of people have been getting, or at least enough people that are reporting and speaking up that it's a problem. And, and it appears to be an issue that's causing a random render-related crash, and nobody has been able to seem to be able to find out the problem was until recently. Now, I need to be clear, I can't for certain say that this will fix it, nor should this fix it, but it worked for me. So if you are getting a random render error crash out of all the mods 8, one of the things you can do is go into the video settings, click on the extra tab here, and change chunk memory allocator to swap. It's set to async by default. I have absolutely no idea why this works for me, but it does. And I'm able to actually get on with my day here. I thought I was gonna have to cancel this video this week and wait for 1.12 and pray that it was fixed. So I guess we can get on with the episode and let's talk about some of the things I did over the last week because folks, I, I have been not feeling great. I've been kind of sick this last week. So. I got some infrastructure work done finally and got a bunch of bees made. So I've got like the flukes ones here. Coming back down here, we've got silicon bees, which I made because I was getting tired of making silicon from nether quartz. So I figured we'd just get it automatically made from the bees to make making A2 chips easier. Down here, we've got the pink slime bees from the previous week. And over here on the other side, I've got the emerald and Sirs quartz bees done. So I've got plenty of Sirs quartz coming in. We finally have enough emeralds getting rolling to actually start making a decent amount of upgrades. So I figure we can continue with bees today since I've tapped out of other resources. Coming inside my base, you can see that I've made some changes. I added some speed upgrades to the centrifuges. I made these one by two drawers. I'm gonna make them one two by twos eventually, store storm more cones. I may make them just feed randomly into the centrifuges. I, I don't know, I haven't figured out what the throughput's like on these yet, for sure. Over here behind me, I added a blast chiller because I noticed my honey tank was getting kind of full and I figured I should make, have that make honey blocks. The blast chiller is a thermal expansion tool that basically just freezes stuff. And the only real complication in this to make for me was the invar. I don't have any easy ways to make it like the induction smelter. So instead I used yield fire charge with nickel and iron ingots. But I got it made, so it was an easy one-time thing to get done. One of the other changes in 1.0.11 was adding random loot rewards to some of the quests. Like if we come in here to the bounty board, you can see that there's now this random reward section. I'm not entirely certain how I feel about random rewards because it feels like you can jump progress doing it, but this is also kitchen sink pack where you can pretty much jump straight to the end in anyways. So it dropped me a mechanism energy cube, which is slightly better than the integrated dynamics one I'd made previously. So I slotted that in and called it a day. I also added in, well, not on these two, but I added in the simulation upgrades to most of my hives. I was just waiting on some more animals to finish this out, but I also had to get on with my day and get this episode made. Because I, what I wanted to do was get started on bee breeding. Because as you can see, when we look at the stats of a bee, as I've shown previously, they have various stats. And the main three that we care about are productivity, weather tolerance, and behavior. Productivity is how fast do they work? 
and it can go up to very high. To this analogy, there's only one way to get very high, and I don't care to do that because, well, it requires making kamikaze bees, which is made by making the bee hat and getting attacked by something and then somehow capturing those bees before they kill you. It's supposedly not hard, but I, uh, I don't care that much right now. Weather tolerance is whether or not they will work in rain or not. And then behavior is dinural, which is daytime, nocturnal, nighttime, or metaternal, which is all the time. So what you want to do, obviously, is make a very high productivity bee that's metaternal and rain tolerant. And as I was just showing you, I have most of that. Like I said, I don't have very high, but uh, I do have high. So I don't actually have to go fishing for those because you can train bees to get those attributes, which is I think is how I got some of these, by leashing them to a fence post out in the open during their opposite daylight nighttime cycle or in bad weather which i have done repeatedly which is what was killing my bees way back over in the earlier episodes so uh lessons learned but we've already got the stats we need for the most part so i'm going to call that a win okay folks all right so the gen x in this work kind of like they do in the old forestry mod and we need to extract them from bees and to the best of knowledge there's two ways to go about doing this one the less intrusive way the Pokey Pokey Gene Sampler, which is an upgrade you can put in a hive that will just slowly extract gene samples and gives you a small amount randomly over time from whatever bees you have in the hive. Now, the stats on my bees are kind of scattershot across the board and that would seems like it would be a kind of a crapshoot over time, so I kind of don't want to deal with that. It's also usually pretty slow, especially since I already have bees that have the correct stats. The other way, however, is involving the bottler, which you use a piston to shove a bee into a bottle, and then which turns it into a slurry of genetic fluids, which you then centrifuge. Well, the bee's not going to live through that one. That's a that's a that's a bit more intrusive to their life, I'd say. But I think what I'm going to do is set up the breeding chamber first using the bees that I know have the stats that I want to use to make a bunch of them that I can then smash. And this just requires getting the bee, putting it in there, and putting a bunch of bee cages in so that it outputs them. And really, this just requires a baby upgrade, which is easy enough to make, and then a rose bush. And friends, friends, let me tell you, it uh, finding a rose bush, a very, very specific flower in this mod pack, uh, <laughs> it didn't take me hours, but uh, it wasn't fun. So we have it here now. It's sitting in a botany pot, and I've got more being made just in case. But, um, yeah, maybe ask your friends if you're playing on a server first. All right, so I've got this hooked up now, and it's, it took longer than I want to admit to because I went to go make some more laser I.O. interface cards and forgot that I was out of redstone and made a bunch of logic chips so that I could make more in the future, forgetting that they used... A lot of redstone. So here we are in the breeding chamber and here I've got two of my crystalline bees with identical stats. We'll toss them in here, breed them together. Let's toss a half a stack of cages in there and let this get going. And there's apparently buttons that do not work yet. I can probably add speed upgrades to this. I probably should go do that. Yep, there it is right there. Well, if it wasn't working and I figured out why, it's because you need to add flowers to the hands here. So uh, now the process is going. Now we just have to wait for our bees to pop out so we can squish them. So in the meantime, let's get a bottler and a centrifuge ready since they aren't hard to make. Now I've got to figure out how to place this because this comes with the added difficulty of you have to cage a bee physically in it to smush it. And I'm not sure how I'm going to handle that one. All right, so I've got an ugly sort of setup to it going here we're going for working not pretty because this is all a temporary setup anyways i've got the bees outputting to this chest behind it here there's a small stack on already so let's grab some of these to see if this even works right now i should be able to release them here smash this button to smash them down into the bottler and they should be good to go the bottler already has glass bottles in it this whole thing feels uh clunky though especially since the bee immediately escaped all right, if this doesn't work, I don't know what's going to because now I'm using the mob fan. We're going to put it into this tube and put it right up against where it can get squished into the bottle. So let's try this again. Okay, there it is. Back outside the cage. Take two with it completely walled off with glass this time. Just kill me. I think I can officially say I hate everything about this mechanic. 
But that also didn't work, so apparently it has to be a grown-up bee. So I guess we uh, just leash all these. This doesn't feel entirely humane, but here we are. I found I'd made in a bunch of extra copper bees on accident, so I guess let's see if this works right. If I can coax it in there, because that's the wrong area. There we go. Although I see nothing in here. It had just popped out the corner for some reason. That does not seem like good design either. So I found it on the back side. But we just take this and toss this into the centrifuge and out will come DNA samples. And there we go. So when looking at these, it looks like it dumped all of the statistics and you can see that they have percent by them. The higher the percent, the higher the chance that it will give the bee you want the trait that it has. Because you combine those either together to increase their power, although this does a very poor job of explaining that, or you combine them with a treat to feed them the trait. So what we're gonna wanna do is smash a couple more to make high versions of the traits we want. This whole thing is just needlessly complex since we're already able to catch them in their cages to begin with. But this guy here is just about ready to go. So watch him grow up, get stuck in the fence post and suffocate instead of getting up onto the bottle like he's supposed to. Oh good, he probably is stuck on that fence post now. I hate this so much. There we go. And now that we've started to get multiple of these, we can now take the, like, the metaternal one, set this 33 up there with this 41, which will make a 74. One more of these and we should be about done. Now that we have our 100% samples, we can combine them with a honey treat to get the trait onto a bee. Now to be clear, this is the part where I need to create a bee and then empty out its hive of all of its old versions and put only the new one in and breed it back up. It's going to be kind of tedious and annoying. Alternately, I can make two of them and then use the uh, breeder over there to make them, but then I'd require twice as many samples. So uh, let's just not gamble and let's go clear out some hives, I guess. And the best one to start with is probably the one that's slow and in progress my ancient bees for ancient debris because while they have high productivity, their weather tolerance, it doesn't exist and they're set to only daytime. So I guess let's wake these lazy bees up. Go pick up two of them and then feed the treat to the other one. And now back in its hive, you can see that it's now has weather tolerance and metaternal behavior. Now we just need for it to breed up some more. Overall, I've got to say that I am not really a huge fan of this process. This was overly clunky. I wish we could just melt them down straight into liquid DNA like we could in forestry without having to manually deal with this or even having to grow them up. They've already got the traits, come on now. All right, so there's one last device I want to discuss before we go, and that's the gene indexer. And this device acts as a big, huge storage for all of your gene samples. And if you give it a redstone signal, it will combine them automatically up to 100%. So let's crush up a bee as an example. And I want to point out that they appear to go out to the bottler on their own as long as they're adults. I'm just maintaining this cage because, well, I'm breeding up baby crystal and bees that seem to escape otherwise. But let's mash it up. And then after we centrifuge out all of its tasty little bits, we throw it here into the gene indexer, flip the switch, and you'll notice there are now gaps in here where it auto combined them together. Now all that's really left to do while waiting for this guy to spawn some more is add actual hive upgrades that I haven't done for productivity and speed. I have no idea what the best mix of those is. I'm gonna experiment with a little bit, but probably not gonna be able to come up with any clear answers because it's really hard to track the speed of production on these things. And I'll probably just end up just shoving productivity upgrades in them anyhow. But that's the main thing left to do to get this up to speed, and that's frankly the easier part. Anyhow, that's bee breeding in a nutshell. I hope at least someone found this useful because this is an awful lot of tedium on my part and now I have to go apply it to all my bees yet. So if you found this episode interesting or entertaining, please give it a like or subscribe if you're new. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.